can never do it like I When you see man pull up and slide Man stepped in a room with legends, Rio and Steve You know it's a vibe Check the podcast, what you wanna know? Don't ask me, go and ask Joe If you're talking Premier League He's on the front line and I gotta go oh. It's a vibe with five, vibe with five And you already know what it is It's a vibe with five, vibe with five And you already know what it is Vibe with five, vibe with five And you already know what it is it's a vibe with five, vibe with five, and you already know this. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back with a very special vibe with five. Uh, we've been waiting for this one, especially after the banging episode that we had. It's a pleasure to have you back here, Patrice. Steve, do you want to kick it off a little bit? Now, let me start, please. Let me start. Yeah. I've spoken about this before. We've got a selection of questions here. Mm. I want to ask you, Pat, we're not going to go back to the right at the beginning of your career. We're going to go to when you had that call from Sir Alex Ferguson to come to Man United. Yeah. The first conversation. What was your feelings and emotions once that call came? Because I've told people how I felt. I want to know how you yeah. felt. So, actually, uh, he, he speak with my agent and we met in an airport in, uh, in Paris, uh, Charles de Gaulle, to a special room. And I remember he didn't speak like French, so... It was more like David Gill and my English wasn't great, so my agent was translating and everything. But I remember he was asking me a question like, uh, do you drink? No. Do you like to go out sometime? Are you ready to not lose a game? Yeah. Are you ready to not even draw like one game? Yeah. So I feel like he was a le- like an interview from the FBI and, you know, he, I, I feel like, and when I shook his hand, I know everything I say, I was like, I'm ready. You know, if I let them down, if I let him down, this man gonna kill me. So mm. it was really impressive. And I'll be honest with you, Rio, you know, before United came, my agent, uh, we had Liverpool, Inter Milan. Oh my God, can you imagine and, the and United. Doors moment? And I remember my agent was so excited and saying, Patrice is Manchester United. And i be honest with you, I was watching Man United because of Eric Cantona. So these are the big influence. But when I met Ferguson, you feel like something special. Like you feel like his aura. If you, if you do well for this man, you know, you're gonna win and achieve a lot of things in your life. Hmm. That was my, my feeling. And then you went shopping for the worst coat in the world. Wow. Put the coat up right I, now. I, I'll be honest with you. Like, this is a real story, actually, this coat. Pat gets hammered to this day in the group, yeah, in the yeah. WhatsApp group. But even this, I wanted coat. to give it, like, to one of my friends. My friends say, like, even if you pay me, I won't, like, take that, that coat. So, <laughs> still got what's it? up? At, of, I, I think he's, he's in my garage in Manchester. I, I, I don't know where he is. He's probably <laughs> hanging around on his own. You guys have to cheek, because that suit you was rocking weren't the best either, mate. What? The John Travolta suit. I'm going to bring that suit in one bring day. It no, in. I, I bring be, it in. I'll be honest with you, he looked better than my coat. Actually, <laughs> yeah. he looked like cool with the, you know, the blonde hair, whatever. Ooh. But that coat, yeah, no, th- I remember. Put so a picture in, please. My agent said, we're going to Manchester, it's cool. I was living in Mo- Monte Carlos, you know, see my Copacabana every day. <laughs> I go to that shop and I remember, and it's actually a really expensive coat. And the guy said, oh, you should buy that coat. I said, okay. And when I wait in the shop, you know, I wasn't sure. But maybe because of the light, everything was looking like good. Mm. Then soon as I come out of the shop, that jacket become like a triple XL. <laughs> I don't know how many cheap they kill for making that jacket real. And I'm still looking for that guy. So if that guy is watching the podcast, I'm looking for you. Because, yeah, he tricked me. Donate it to the United Museum. Yeah, that's what you should do. I'm going to donate mine. We should do it together. I'm going to donate my suit. Let's do that, Rio, but I'm not sure the guys of the museum he will accept. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they, have, they have a room. Okay. Yeah. It's not on so display, right? But they have a room. Why not? It's a good idea. But you know what? I, I, you know, I saw you say something in your early days at Man United. You were saying you wasn't prepared for no. Man United. No. And I, I've, I've joked and we've laughed about no. your debut game against Man City when yeah. the manager pulled you off at half time and said, watch yeah. and learn. Talk us through that moment yeah. and how you reacted and, beca- and got yourself to become a Man United I player. Abs- you know, Rio, I absolutely agree with you. You know, when people ask me, where's your favourite match? They expect me to say the champion, but actually it's that game. Why? Because when I signed for United, you know, I was named four times the best left back in the league, playing in the national team, reaching the final of Champions League, uh, named the best uh, young, uh, the bon- best young French player, you know. So I came with a big head, like I was like, you know, flying. I think I was a big star. Mm. It was a big deal. Then when I came to United, that's when I understand. For me, it was a new job. So that game in particular against City, I came debut against City. Debut yeah. in January. Call. Imagine three uh, training session and you know in the morning I remember uh, Michael Silvestre 
Exactly. <laughs> and <laughs> and Luisa, <laughs> we're eating like, you know, <laughs> pasta with beans. Eating and I'm not, a, you know, I'm not the big breakfast fan. Then I started doing the same. I said, you know, it's a new culture. First time I play at 12, you know, in France, or you play in the evening, on the afternoon, whatever. Then I started eating and I feel sick that day. I went in my room, I started vomiting, you know. Then I said, I'm going to call the doctor and saying, you know, I can't play. But trust me, when you play with those, I call them bastard, <laughs> him, Wayne, you know, when I remember when in a training session, when someone give you just a go get off, this was like even more important than scoring a goal. The warrior was like, oh, making those <laughs> notes. Like they used, he, they used to, I promise you, my first six months at United, I look at them, they used to laugh at me. They were like, oh my God, he's shit. You know, like Paul scores. Think, he said, Patrice, I think you were a jockey. <laughs> and he said, I think we should uh, like send you back for free uh, oh. to, to Monaco anyway. Did he say it with a straight face? He said straight yeah, face. Like, like Scorsi, Scorsi, <laughs> Scorsi doesn't play. But that tell you, this is like, this is, the, it was a like family, but we were really straight. And you know, you, it? build you, like you hurt, whatever. So that game, <laughs> I start, I remember 12, it, it was, you know, in, United, in uh, Manchester is never sunny. I've been living nine years in Manchester. I've only done three barbecue in nine years. <laughs> <laughs> that day, the sun was out. I remember after five minutes, Trevor St. Clair, head bowed me, I start like, he bullied me. No and I remember way. I was against the post. And you know, when you talk to yourself, I was like, what you doing here? <laughs> the football is so fast, it's so strong. You were like in Monte Carlo, chilling, anyway. And the worst. So first time, Ferguson, we came in a dressing room, he gave the air dryer to everyone. And he looked at me, he said, Patrice, now you're going to sit and watch the rest of the game next to me and you're going to understand the English football. Who, so came, it, who came on for you? I don't know. Mikel, Mikel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Real. I'm having a nice morning. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's an amazing podcast. Don't really. Let me finish my story. So after that, the worst, you know, what is the worst barrio? I went home. I was with my agent, you know, Luca. Yeah. Then I remember he was with his wife and he looked at me. He, he put his hand like that. He said, I'm sorry, Patrice. <laughs> wow. I look at him and say, he said, I'm sorry, you made a big mistake to bring you to Man United. Wow. So even my own Asian and his wife was nearly like crying. It was like, feel like someone is dead. Wow. Then after that, you know, I remember even me and, and Vidic, we play a, a game. But after that game, by the way, no, we play against Liverpool. I had a great game. I win the free kick, then Rio scored the winning goal. So I was like, you know, I'm back. But after we played many games and we were like scoring goal in the left hand side, but also conceding a lot of goal. So Ferguson start to like, we need to find the balance. So I'm going to give you rest and whatever. And me and Vidic, we even play with the reserve a game. And I remember, you remember, it was Rene, the coach. Mm. He subbed us again after 45 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> what reserves? In the reserves. Reserve game, he subbed. Cool, right. Me and Nemanja Vidic, we were in the shower, I remember. Vidic was like, oh, I'm going to go back to Belgrade. Me, I was like, yeah, my agent say, IS Roma, they are in touch, so maybe I'm going to go to IS Roma to tell you that. But it's, one, two things, players, big it's players. one thing in life, you know, when people like laugh at me, that's when you bring some. And when I see like, you know, player like Rio and Scorsi when laughing at me and I didn't understand how he works. So I missed the World Cup. I've not been selected to the World Cup in 2006. Mikhail go instead. Yeah. That's why he's uh, so, Mikhail. Well, so, like, so, so, Mikhail so took his place. No, no, he, he took more than my place. <laughs> 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 my place, I don't care. He took something else. Oh. Anyway, not my wife. Huh? Anyway, <laughs> after that, all the summer, I work in the gym watching the World Cup. Like France reached the final, you know, when Zizo had the guys, yeah. Materazzi, we lost it anyway. Then I remember I built myself. Because I understand actually to play in, in England, strong. first of all, you need to be strong. Yeah. And me, I'm a, you know, I like to play like football, nice football. So I remember after we did a, a preseason in South Africa and Mick Phelan, I remember he shook my hand and said, now, from now you're a United player. Wow. And after the rest is, is, is history. Shows you hard work no matter what level, you've got a graft. I've asked you, sorry, I've asked you this a few times. Seeing him in those early training sessions, he said that being barged off was like a joke to you. Mm. When you saw him and Vidic, but mostly him, <clears throat> what what did you see about him that just wasn't up to speed yet? 
I think physicality. I think you've got to be like Trevor Sinclair wasn't a massive big right winger, mm. but he was aggressive. He was, he was hard working. He would jump into you, make it hard work for you. And that game, Pat wasn't he wasn't equipped to deal with that at that point. Didn't know what to expect. But what I noticed is that with Pat, he he was a hard worker, always in the gym, always working on himself. Um, and you could see there was an intent to become a player. I mean, uh, and I don't think Pat was the type of person who would walk away from that challenge easily. So I knew that. I mean, me and Wayne used to speak a lot about it. Like, oh, where they got these guys, man? Like, where they got these guys? This is a joke. No, but it's honesty. Like, yeah. We're, yeah, we're trying to win the league here. But I, I love that. You know, I, right. I love I love what Rio say because I feel it, and that's yeah. Why that's, the, that's sorry. That's an important yeah. part, Pat. Like, in that change room, this is the the big thing when successful change rooms or workplaces work. I felt like that, and a few of the players felt like that about Patrice and Nemanja. They knew. The worst place to be is if we're feeling like that Protect. and these guys don't yeah, know. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's no, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we yeah. walk away going, oh, they'll feel couldn't. even worse mm. and they won't then have the incentive to improve even more. Yeah. Because what area you find out, either they're going to have the incentive to go away and improve, like he told you he did, and then him and Vida become what they became, great legends, or they fold and go home. But we I have a question. Do you think like with the new generation, you can have this attitude and do you think those players they will like show up like we did with Vidic mm. or they will be like feeling I don't know I, I think it's hard I think it's maybe wrong to even expect this generation to be like that because it's just different like you were saying before about being different to, to, to judge against different times it's hard because are they uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think so I think that now if you but again the difference is maybe they could I don't know right but now it seems like the the coaches and the, the leaders aren't allowed maybe sometimes. Yeah, but I think it's but, different when you're in a Pep Guardiola team. No, but the, also the yeah. other diff different thing is we haven't had to deal with social media. Mm. Imagine social media. <laughs> How hard that is. Oh. Like, we didn't have that. Exactly. So that's, that's one, that's a positive for our generation. We, we yeah. didn't have it. This guy's We're every day, every minute, social media is there. Yeah. That debut wouldn't have been a film on Twitter, would it? It would have been a meme. Oh, they will a make meme. a meme like yeah. every day. Like, <clears throat> what is this? So, yeah. What, what, what players surprised you when you came? How good they were or whatever. No, I, I think uh, uh, Gixi. I think Gixi because even Gixi teach me things like, you know, to, to cross on the floor between the leg because he was always Patrice. When you're going to cross, the reaction of the, the defender is always he open his leg. Sometimes, you know, just do those low cross, mm. cr uh, cu cut back. So, and I remember he, he was seeing like some pass. Like even myself, I, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't believe he understand that. And also the consistency, you know, I was like just him, Scorsi, they win so many trophies, but in the training, you remember Rio, if you just, sometimes the small game in the training were more important yeah, than, yeah, yeah. than the actual game. Harder. You remember they were harder. And when you lose, someone like, you know, in the dressing room say, you, oh, you were the black card. To be fair, when Rune was most of the training, the black cat, <laughs> let's be honest. Oh, no, the, we had a, we, the other day we had a, um, yeah. a mess, mess that was like, discussing, arguing, debating stuff in the group. we got a WhatsApp group, yeah? Um, and Tom Cleverly, we used to play olders versus youngers on a Friday. It used to be a hard, this is the game he's talking about, it used to be a hard game. Eight against eight, nine against <laughs> yes. nine in a small, tight area. So physical, really hard. <laughs> The old team, we used to slap the younger kids, yeah. like Welbeck, the, the Silver Twins. Like regularly. Cleverly. Yeah, regularly. All these, we used to get slapped. Johnny Evans, they used to get slapped up. Mm -hmm. And I remember Pat, we used to win the game, and he used to say to Tom Cleverly, you're the black cat. And yeah, Tom, Tom Cleverly said the other day, he said, you know what that used to do to me? How, how bad I used to feel. Like, cause so what do they mean by the black? What do they mean by that? Bad luck. The bad luck. Bad luck. Like, like this is why your team. Yeah, you're the you're the bad luck. No I didn't way. know Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tommy said it, this is years ago, you know. And he's saying it, that, that, that used to hurt me. But I was saying loud, like yeah, like yeah. that, laughing. You're gonna <laughs> never win. <laughs> That's why you need us. If we don't have like the experienced player, you are nobody yeah. here. They should we start going like one that. new up every every time. One new up passing, looking like more cup winners, and all of a sudden three goals, bang. But were they were there any? and it's important I know this is about you but any young players that stood out to you at that time when you thought oof no I'll be, I'll be honest <laughs> no I, I mean like I love the twins I think Fabio and, and Rafa yeah. sometimes I feel like even sad for them because I didn't want like to to rest I remember one game uh, Ferguson said Patrice I mean you you play a lot of game and you should rest I said boss I'm gonna rest when I die when I die I'm gonna plenty of rest I'm gonna tell you a story about, uh, you remember Butner, but Alex Butner. Butner. Mm. So we played at Manchester City. I didn't have a good game. 
and during the week, you know, Rio, you know who is playing because when we do the cross and finishing, mm. he put. So I remember I was, uh, he, he put Gixi and, and Butler. Then I, I remember Rene came to me, he said, Patrice, why are you not happy today? You're not like usual. I said, is my birthday today? Why do you want me to, to be happy? Why do you want me to smile? <laughs> he said, but what's wrong? I said, why I'm not playing uh, against, we were playing against Talk. Why I'm not playing? He said, no, the manager didn't make the team. Uh, I don't know, Patrice, we'll see. I said, okay. At the end of the training session, I went to uh, Sir Alex uh, Ferguson's uh, office. Man, boss, when I'm not playing uh, uh, this weekend, no, but Patrice, you know, you play so many games and to be fair against City, I feel you were tired, so I'm going to play the kids. I say, I'm playing. Who's going to deal with Peter Crouch? Stoke, I'm playing. He said, but Patrice, I already tell the kids, I say, I'm playing and I leave his, 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 his office. Like, true story. Then I remember the day of the game, when he see on the board, boom, I start. And I remember I look the face of Butner, he start being red because the manager didn't even tell him nothing. Oh, wow. I had a great game. We beat Stoke really comfortably, I think 4-0. After the game, I remember Ferguson, he come to me, he say, you got balls. Because if you weren't playing that game showing up, I will kill you because you... And I went to mm. Butner and I say, you know what? I apologize. You were supposed to play, but I tell the boss I'm playing. And now I think next game we have uh, the Coca-Cola Cup. I said, now you mm. can play that game. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I went like to defy like things in a mm. nice way. Mm -hmm. But I was so like determined and strong. Then even he have to change like the, 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 the team. The team. Go on, I know you've had questions. I got, um, we had this conversation driving back from... Um, from the match in Marseille when I yeah. came over for the game. Well, I know he was going to ask me this. <laughs> the, um, you mentioned about, as United fans, we heard about like you and Vidage going checking out the museum to learn about the club and, and get mm. soaked in it. And you went, no, nah, I did something better than that. I used to take Bobby Charlton out for lunch. <laughs> Please just give me some of no, those. I never, say, I never say that. Yeah, you did. Oh, maybe I was lying. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, but no. I, I had a lot of. Uh, you had a good relationship with Bobby. I, Bobby yeah, you? I have a good relationship for with him, and you had a song I, about him. I know he was always yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. <laughs> That's when we are used to to win the league. Yeah. But no, it's just like every time after the game, and I was talking with him, and he he, he just loved me. It's maybe sometimes it just to please me. He was like, Patrice, you, you're one of my favorite players. And I was like asking, you know, advice. And, but I'll be honest with you, you know, every time we were like taking the plane Rio and I see Bobby Shaw, I was always like, oh, this man can't still be on the plane. Mm -hmm. You know, what's happened with the Busby babe? It's just like when I was shooting his and for me it was legend. That's why I say when you come to big club, you know, you have to go and read book, watch DVD. It's no excuse back in the day. You need to understand the story. Like Rio always used to say, you carry, you, you carry in your back the history of the club. So it's not like you're just playing for Man United. You're playing also you see that, that team, the Busby Bev. And I, I go to that uh, goal against Bayern Munich. So the night before we went where the, the crash happened. So I I'm made some prayer. Yeah, yeah. Then I remember... I'm someone, I, I, I pray, but I don't pray to play a good game or whatever. I just say I want the Busby Babe to be proud of me. It always shown through that you, know, you took that side of the club to heart in a big way. And I think as fans, we definitely uh, appreciated that. But I think you Gar got it as well, I think. Ga mm. Gary Neville or whatever, and as a foreign player, he, he, he was surprised the way I was talking with so much passion. But I, I actually feel as a Mancunian. That's the way, like, that. Like, if you ask me right now... You feel adopted the place, in your... The, yeah, the place where I feel home is Manchester. When people say, where is the best city? You know, people, like, judge a city about uh, the old flashy, is good mm. restaurant or whatever, but me about the people, mm. and I just feel home. And that's why Manchester will still the place... With, Man United is in my DNA. I play for Juventus, whatever. But United is... I Like I always say, I don't need Manchester United. I love Manchester United. So I will be always there. Like it's, it's, um, I, it's an addiction. Mm -hmm. It's an addiction. Was there anything better than playing with Tevez, Rooney and Cristiano? I think Rio after we can, can say something about that. It was just like, when you got just, I remember, Tevez and Rooney in front for us defender. Mm -hmm. I think those games you don't even have to defend. 
Like the ball will come and run because they already do the press. They're gonna make sure the center back gonna never good like uh, uh, give a good pass. And you know Ferguson sometimes he was really really arrogant. You know what he was doing. So he wa we were like winning for example three 0 He will rest like Cristiano and Tevez, and suddenly he will bring on like Cristiano and <laughs> Tevez. And I speak with him about that. He was like, I just want to make sure to show, you know, the enemies, all the other team. How big we are, but we had like like in one point we had like three team, mm. three team. We can do you? Sorry, that's not included. Do you remember? Do you remember? Ars do you remember Arsenal? When we win the cup, no, two you, nil. You, we play with with how many defender? I remember there was like eight, seven, eight, seven eight, seven, eight, 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 seven. In total, yeah, eight yeah. defensive <laughs> player, eight. I remember that told you everything. that was horrible. Do you remember? Thank you very much. Did Rafael Fabio. It was, ah, it was, uh, it was, it was crazy. A but we were like, we know we were going to win. It was, it was the, the culture was created. It was there. Oh. Did you did you feel that culture? Like, how did you adopt that culture? Because like when I came, I wasn't a winner. I hadn't won nothing. Mm. And then you become, you look, you learn from the other players. Yeah, but ex exactly, Rio. You know when, you know I see like all of us guys and like the the most experienced player like Gixi, Gary Neville, Scorsi. They, they they win all those trophy and I see the way they're training, you know this this really inspired me a lot. I have a story where I receive a knock, so I was in a massage table and we were playing on the on the on the on the Saturday. Then the Friday the, the doc said, Patrice, I think you should not training with the team. So I was in the table massage having a massage and everything. Then suddenly I remember I see Scorsi passing and he was limping. He had a problem with his knee. After that, Gixi doing his exercise because of his back struggling. Mm. Gary Neville, he had a problem strapping his ankle, like going out. I remember, I look at myself, I say to the physio, I'm going to training. Mm. He said, no, you can't, the doc say, I said, do you think I'm gonna let those dinos off? Mm. <laughs> going outside and training, and me, I'm gonna stay in the bed like a diva? Mm. I went, I trained, I didn't have any injury, and I played the, the, the game the next day. So th those those players, like thanks to them, they inspire me so much. That's why sometimes I don't want to blame the, the player there at United because they don't have any example mm -hmm. like we used to have. Mm. Like and and this is I think is really important when you play for a team like Man United. You need those those character, those personality. So even when you know you like you want to play diva. You got those guys. You like okay. Come you, you you can't disappoint guys like that. You no, can't okay. to, to, to to think that you're going to sit there and say I'm going to have a day <laughs> off in training today. You got Roy Keane, Gigsy, Butty, mm. Scolzi sitting there, looking at you going, and you think so, bro. Then man, look at me like, <laughs> what are you doing? Kill you. They're, you're finished. Like, like Rio say, I promise you. You know when someone was missing a training session, <laughs> we will kill him. Really? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, kill him. Yeah. Oh, you he tired? shouldn't play. Yeah. Are you tired? Yeah, really. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> yeah. okay. so it's a joke. But yeah, it's, it's, no, no, but Rio, that, that's yeah, the thing. Yeah. The big thing. I, you got someone like Roy Keane who was just aggressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Someone like me, I was, I was like, I could be aggressive, but I would do it sometimes in a jokey way. But, but where you, you go, it. where it, it maybe hurts even more sometimes. Yeah, it hurt. No, you question yourself more. We really, really have those noise. Like sometimes you don't have to talk. He just pass. He look at you. Oh. <laughs> Enjoy your day. You know, it gives you one like of these. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enjoy yeah. your day. And this is like this is hurt so much. But that's what. It's like when you're playing for a champion team, from what I've seen, I've heard Jose say it many times. I've heard players say it when they're down, when you know they, they couldn't stay on that bed too long because Jose will just give them the look. Mm. And what I find incredible is you guys played players that have won multiple things, five Premier League titles, six Premier League titles, and still the people who have won the most wouldn't dare miss training. Mm -hmm. That's the culture that Robin Van Persie must have no, but quiet when he went to United. We were joking earlier on, but yeah, but but that's why he was talking. That's why he apologized. That's when when the first. Can you, said, can you give him the story? Can you give him the story? No. So what's what's happened? You know, uh, he was also the captain of the A two because when the story start actually is when not, we we killed. No, 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 no. I, I have to explain everything <laughs> because people have to understand Wait, when happened? when we play. Listen the story when we play <laughs> in Champions League away. Oh, Slapovich. Remember that Trino, that contract that game. Slapovich. So after that, he was a French journalist. And he say, oh, but the score is a little bit harsh. And I say, to the, tonight was 11 men again, 11 baby. So after he go viral and everything. And I remember Bakary Sanya told me when we play in Old Trafford, when we win the eight, before the game, 
he actually showed my interview to the team. He put it, he put it on the on the dressing room. Oh, and I remember, like, <laughs> he was a, a, a Brazilian player, Denilson. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah Denilson. And he, he make an interview. Oh, we're gonna show them. We're gonna show Patrice Evra we are men and everything. So I remember they come to Old Trafford and we destroy them a two. Do you know who the midfield was? No. Cleverly, Anderson, Ashley Young, and Nani. Thank eight, you very much. You know, I even posture. forget that. So I, I, I remember I say after the game, they say, oh, so they steal your way. I say, no, I say Arsenal is a good academy football club. It's when, you know, you want to like play uh, to make them good. And after every time you sell them, they win something. You know, I, 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 <laughs> I used to say to my Arsenal, no, because Joey killed us this morning. So let me tell the real story. You know, Arsenal, like what I feel when I play against Arsenal, you know, it's when you're having a good time with your woman, your wife, your partner, you're enjoying. And suddenly the moment when, you know, someone just stop you. And that's what Arsenal- Before the explosion. Before the explosion. It's like they play a good football. No goals, no end product. And no end product. <laughs> but now they fix it this year. So that's why the way I'm talking, I'm talking in my time. So mm. I don't want to disrespect now because I don't want people to say, stop living in the past. No, I'm living in the present right now. I mean, like before Ten Hag arrived, I think we were the baby, and no, no Arsenal. Yeah. So, can you bring it back to the Robin van Persie bit then? That's he joined United and won the league, mate. Yeah, yeah, no, I know, but I want to, I want to get the depth of <laughs> no. what did he see that was different. Yeah, but but he, he's, I remember Robin. He say, Patrice, uh, I never see like people so professional training the way you are training in the training session. I he say he finish. Uh, the training, he said everyone is in the gym, so he had to come in the after gym. After training? Too. After, like, before, before training, training and after. In the gym. After training in the gym. That's why he was like, when I was playing to Arsenal, I was still on the pitch and I could see, like, you know, like kids with convertible, like, car already, like, going to our roads or whatever. And this is a fact, but, you know, also, I don't want to talk about this, but at Manchester, you don't have many things, you don't have many distractions. So, to be honest with you, if you're young and you're playing in London, it's hard. It's every day you can do something. Mm. So, so, so you know, it's hard to focus. But to, to back to Van Persie, Rio, I don't know if you remember the way Ferguson managed Van Persie. Because he was like, he know we are animal. If someone doesn't train, we're going to say he doesn't deserve to play. But mm. with Van Persie, he said, guys, these guys, he want training every day. Sometimes he's going to be on the side, training with his own physio and running, but he's going to Is win. To manage I the, have um, to manage his injury. Yeah. But this guy going to win the league with, for us. Mm -hmm. And we believe, but that's what's really important. Ferguson saying that from the, the start of the season. And he did that. And, and what a player. We were talking. I didn't know well Van Persie. But How when, did you not know him, though? Because we I, and know, I say this because even no, Fergie, when Arsene Wenger uh, said to him that, you've got him for a cheaper price. He's better than what you think. It wasn't until later on that he said, oh, he was right. But we're looking, he scored 30 goals the previous season. He's doing things that- Yes, yes. He's yes. really playing against him, isn't it? He didn't, against us, we just didn't, yeah. he didn't, didn't, he didn't like, he wasn't that player. Exactly. And the, the things for us to, to, to accept you and to respect you, you need to, to kill us. Mm. Then we like, okay, this mm. guy can maybe join the team. But when he arrived, the, the touch, in the box and you know he hold the ball and sometimes we had some difficulty with few striker you know losing the ball quickly mm. and the finish like come on that that volley the last the last game that volley against, against Aston Villa. Villa oh my god one of the best players you've played with would you say yeah no. so he's, he's up played there he's, he's he'd be up there he's like up. we play against some great players yeah. but uh, yeah in your team should I say I mean it's hard it's hard man it, yeah. literally you got Van Nistelrooy you got Rooney yeah, Ronaldo Rooney, Tevez like, like yeah, you got so where would you alright we're having honest conversations here where are you ranking them then I don't know man I think Ronaldo goes in at number one out of strikers Rooney I think will be two R really above, yeah. above our don't forget Root Rude, that's Real, what I'm saying. Don't rude. forget, Rude. Yeah, you know, Rude, rude was mad, mad he's, those, he's those guys, and also a striker. I remember sometimes we were winning 4 0. He was taking the ball back of the net because he didn't score to put it in the <laughs> halfway. And after, you know, because he didn't score and we win 4 0, he was doing his shower, being grumpy. Screaming. Screaming. <laughs> like he was going to the back of the net of the opposite team and put it on in the middle. Animal. Start Animal. The Is there any players, Pat, do you remember who, who come and who just didn't be, couldn't buy into the culture of the club? Didn't understand the culture. <laughs> Someone's getting I mean, attacked. no, no, it's not attack. No, it's not attack. It is, is, is a story with uh, Gabriel Alberto. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what's happened? So he come in one game for 20 minutes and he did very well. And he was like, oh my God. Oh, Trafford. Oh, Trafford. He was like, oh my it's God. Oh so my God, sure. Patrice, you know, he's so easy to play for United. I remember you you know, pay with play. He was like that. He's, I say, I say, son, wait. Son? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you have to say son when it's like that because he get carried away. I say, son, <laughs> this is not in United. <laughs> you know, you don't play just one game. You have to play every game in that level. And I remember after he started the game, I think against Newcastle, after five minutes, he couldn't breathe. He, was like, <laughs> <laughs> he needed like some oxygen. <laughs> like to, and Ferguson after that, like, because as a young player, Ferguson never sell normally mm. a young player that fast. So I was like, you see, I told you like after, <laughs> it's not like one game. And I always say, you know, when you play for other team, like for United, when you play uh, uh, a good game, when you play for another team, they're gonna say it was an amazing game. Mm. When you play an amazing game for United, if you play for another team, people are gonna say is, no, for United it's gonna be okay, but for other team it's like, oh my God, Rio was amazing if you play for West Ham or whatever. Mm. And when you play a normal game for another team, but when you play a normal game for United, it's a mm. shit game. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's the standard. True. That's the standard, that's why, we, could, we will only judge you when you play for United because to handle the pressure, man, is a different level and you need to understand Is it more than football? It's more, it's more than football, isn't it? It's more than football. It's about life, it's about, you know, history, it's about family. I think family was the right word, honesty, mm. because if we, you don't have a play a good game, people will tell you straight on your face. Mm. But after that, we, we got our back. No matter when we saw a player like struggling during the game, we're going to we're gonna fight for him. We're gonna mm. die for him. Mm. That's the way it was. Yeah, Tell me about a time you lost your rugby reel on the pitch, and then you can do the same. I lost angry. what? Angry. Where you got angry with him? With Rio? Yeah. Was there ever a time? No, but Rio. To be honest, uh, Rio when he will see like I'm gonna miss a, a easy pass or not even Craig Bellamy in the derby. No, but it's not like we, we couldn't get like angry of that. The fix is Rio, why I think the manager was angry because the manager tell Rio half time like, guys, don't play in the back, like play quicker. Then Rio tried to turn and whatever. And to be fair, you know, when you do a mistake like that, you have to recover and it's not easy. Bellamy was fast, but those things we laugh about it. We, we're not being angry about that. The but most of the time you got angry with him on the pitch, most of it. With Rio? Yeah. Because the center back, they got the energy to talk. <laughs> so every time they ah, left, it's side, they, and then sometime, you know, you like, oh, give me a break. Like, <laughs> like I'm doing like all those up and down and you, you are in the back <laughs> like this, playing as a number 10. And that's the thing, but it's not like angry. It's mm. just like annoying. Yeah, yeah, so no, yeah. I don't, I don't, I, 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 give me I, a time. There must I have been a No, I'll be honest. I'm looking, I'm searching. You're not trying to show up at any point. It's not, to, it, leave me alone, like. <laughs> or talk or ignore him. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Rafael or Fabio, we used to do that on the center back. When they talk, we pretend we can't hear them because it's noisy. But we know exactly, they're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but we just ignore them. But being angry, nah. When you lose your rug with them, because you definitely have. No, I used to, I used to you know what, my, I, what not, I didn't lose my rag with him. It was more, I, you have standards, innit? Yeah. Like if, a, if, a, if the winger's getting crosses in mm, on yeah. Pat's side, I'm on Pat. Pat, mm. come on, man, stop him. Yeah. That's it. Stop and then he'll give, he'll give me something back mm -hmm. yeah. if, he, if, he, if he thinks something, get us up or something like that. Yeah. But it wasn't really... No, no. Like, no, I didn't really have to. I mean, Pat, to be fair, I think one of Pat's biggest strengths that he grew into, considering his first game he got bullied, he's big, one of his biggest strengths was his resilience and his ability to defend the back post. I don't think there's been many, I think even probably better than Gary Neville in that position and that's one of the hardest things to do as a defender when the mm. ball's being crossed on the other side to defend the back yeah. post is difficult especially when the big strikers are pulling out size, yeah. Mm. but yeah yeah you're searching something you won't find now we never get mm. angry on that then defending the, the back post technical what's the, the move get there early get it out no get there early like you need to be in line on, with the centre back like especially if you know the, the right full back like going out to stop the cross you have to be there and me I remember I was always like my uh I would say the po the reference point I was looking is the post, the second post. So I was like, sometimes maybe too much inside, but I have time to jump at least. 
And sometimes when you do far, and especially if you have your striker in front of you, you're already dead because you will react and it's too late. So make sure you like protect it inside, you're really close to your center back, then you got time to deal with it. And to be honest, like if it's like a, sometime, I would say too far, like not the second point, but even far away, you always got time to go and try, you know, to stop the, the cross. Mm. But make sure first, like you're really close with the, the two center back. Who was your hardest opponent? So I, I, I had always this question, and when I give my answer, people are always su surprised. He's already said uh, No, I had like some difficult game, like, like for example, when I was playing against Aaron Lennon, yeah. I have to be 100%. Wow. Like if I am 95%, I'm gonna have a difficult day. Mm. We will still win the game, but just like Rio say, just because he crossed, he give assists, for me, I will say I have a shit game. And I hate him because he was always running behind. So he was coming to the ball, boomerang behind. And that's why I don't understand the, the, when the player got that speed, why mm. they don't use it like, this is the worst for a defender. Mm. Just come to the ball, boom, go behind. You do this like three times, you're gonna kill a defender. But the toughest player I play against is James Milner. Really? Is James Milner. Because these guys <coughs> was frustrated me. And he's strong. And he was going to the challenge. I go in the air, like tackling. And sometimes I was like, you know, attack. Like he doesn't <laughs> like he follow you everywhere. This is a is a war machine, man. You go in the toilet, this guy was following even in the <laughs> toilet. Like and this was my toughest opponent. He's not uh, Messi or Cristiano I play. I against. thought you was gonna say Cristiano. No, no, but, but, no, but Rio can tell you. Cristiano, he know in the training. You, you remember when we doing opposite? Game. When he come in my side, I was like, "Is the ball or the man? <laughs> he can't be both." <laughs> and I was going strong. And I promise you, in the training, after three minutes, he was going to the to the other side because I wasn't like I don't want him to ridiculize me. Man, I've got kids. You have to remember, so in the changing room. No, and in the if training, he gets if you get no. done in training, no. you don't hear the last really? of it. No, yeah. he was even training, screaming. Yes, people Bro, screaming. But I told you the training was more important than the actual game. That's incredible, man. Um, Anderson, I used ask to get, you. Anderson used to get hammered in training sometimes. Is it? Where's Brown? You say no, you can't be on our team sometimes, or you say no, no, come on, man, he he's not training today. He doesn't want to train. But man, sometimes would try and just do mad flicks. Waza was horrendous in training. Like, like Wait, Rio, who is the worst player in training? Tevez. Exactly. When Tevez, I swear, like he don't even do his list. He didn't care. He didn't care. He's like that. He's like a bear. He's sleeping. So sometimes I was like, you know, some player they say like, you play on the center the way you train. Mm -hmm. But for those kind of players like Tevez, and I heard also as a, you don't need them to train. But Tevez, you know, at home, he was always training on his own, running on the treadmill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like people, they don't like to train with the team, and I don't understand that. But at home, they're doing the rest. But tr <laughs> trust me, when the game was on, he was, running, <laughs> he was running for everyone on the pitch. He's a pit bull. Yeah. La Pache. Wow. Ah, mad, wow. Mad, mad man. Is he finished? How, 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 playing? I think he's retired no, he's now. How, how, did, how did, I've always said this, yeah. yeah. Three guys, <laughs> oh. one French, one Argentinian, yeah. and one Korean, South Korean. How the hell did you even understand each other? It, it, they were the best friends. They, everywhere they went, yeah, and, one of them, the other, one yeah, will be, yeah. the other two will be coming was, shortly like, after. And even Ferguson, like, couldn't understand. He was Can you like, speak but Korean? which language? No, I, I know few languages, but G speak like good English. G yeah. is shy. He's a liar. He's a liar. G speak good English. So, I was translating every time uh, the, the Spanish of Carlito to G, but it's just like we had so much fun and we are bound and we still like talking to each other. And the, the manager used to call us uh, the ugly. <laughs> Which one is the, the, what do you call it in French? Is the ugly, le bon, la brute, le truc. Uh, you know the West End. No, 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 no. The, the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good, the bad, and the ugly. So who so is you, ugly? G was the good. You was the bad. I, I was the someone was the ugly, but it wasn't me. But it wasn't me. I love you, bro. I love you, uh, Carlos. So, what a player, man! I think that's the perfect way to wrap it up. Patrice, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, you've got a channel that you're working on as well. Uh, great content. You're even going to have this man featuring as well. I'm looking forward I to it. I can't wait to get on there. What's uh, it called? Imperfect. Imperfect, Imperfect with Patrice Evra. Nice. I Thank like you that. for my team. Imperfect. Because, yeah, because I feel like, you know, we are all human beings back in the day. 
uh, and we're all imperfect, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes you're going to make mistake in life or whatever, but you have to, you know, to move forward. So that's why people come in my podcast. They, they're going to talk sometime about things. They're not proud of it, but they're still human being and they're going to mm -hmm. feel really comfortable because we are all human beings. So One yeah. more thing, Pat, before you go. The, the lads in the WhatsApp group that we have, <laughs> they wanted to know, I asked them one question if you could have with Pat, what would it be? And the question is that when it gets a little bit hot in the, in the room, why do you leave? No. This is like... He deletes himself in no, the group. No, this is back in... No, no. I'm going to tell... I'm going to... No, I, I'm going to... I'm going to tell you. I'm going to be honest with you. I have a good relationship with Rio. But Rio have why one me? thing... Because he's you. It is you why I leave the group. <laughs> because he had a way to scream when he put those voice notes. <laughs> like, he really... You know, I love him, but I want to fight straight away. <laughs> I want to fight. And I'm like, you know, before something wrong happened, Sometimes I leave the group, but I'm back every time I back. But now it's a long time. I didn't leave the group because I can cope now with his laughing and, you know, hurting and whatever. And me and Rio, I think we are the, the best crazy banter in that group. Mm. Fletch also is Fletch, dangerous. Darren Fletcher but, is But, but someone, really someone leave for life that group. Uh, <laughs> what's up? <laughs> it's time for you to come back. We miss you, Waza. We it's miss true, you man. in that group. Yeah. Come back, Waza. Where is Waza? So you're saying Rio is imperfect, basically. Yeah, it's, we're gonna yeah, do the show now, man. We're, we're gonna, gonna do the show, now. guys. Thank you so much, man, for watching. If you've watched to the end, please send it to your mates. It's been such such a wonderful show. Uh, even the show we did during the week. Please watch it all, Patrice. No, Joe. Thank you very I'll much. See you soon, man. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean, nice hey, I'll you. see you in May when we uh, we're officially champions of the Premier League. Okay. This is what, how you want no, to finish. No, 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 I will, I will no, see. No, no, I will see. Why not? Yeah. Why not? I love the trophy. I'm going to join the City fans yeah. on their parade. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Stephen Alston, Rio Ferdinand, Vibe 5 special guest, signing out. Peace. <laughs>